idea in the mind. And, and also people say, you know, people who promote mindfulness uh, and, and, and such techniques would say that you never have a problem in the present moment, that it tends to exist in the past or, or the future. And there are examples of that, if we take your example of, of, of public speaking, um, which, which you speak about and it's very helpful, that quite often when you do the event itself, when you, when you go into the, the, you know, when you have to speak, it's actually okay and it flows fine and, um, and you're very happy. Is a lot of it about living in the future and worrying about things that, that haven't happened yet? And I understand that preparation is important, but you can still prepare mm -hmm. in the present moment. Uh, how much would it help if people were more grounded uh, and, 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 and were able to live more presently, if, if you like, uh, when they were trying to combat stress or um, ideas of perception? Yeah, I mean, I think that definitely can help, and especially something like mindfulness, I think, can be a useful tool to prevent the catastrophic thinking that I think is often behind the negative expectation effects, the kind of nocebo effects. So what we often do is we take what could be, you know, a fairly small problem, but then we kind of layer it up with all of these additional yeah. anxieties. So you, you know, if you're worried about public speaking, well, like it's fine for you to, to kind of want to kind of perform at your best and to be conscious of the fact that you might not. So, you know, it's a motivational force to, to help you to improve your preparation. But if you then start imagining all of these other scenarios that might arise from a bad presentation, so, you know, you imagine losing your job or being humiliated or, you know, a clip going viral, you know, that is to me is quite, um, it's kind of useless thinking, it's catastrophic thinking and it's only going to fuel the anxiety. And I think things like mindfulness can help us to, if we just like accept what we're feeling in the present, but then don't let that become a chain of thinking mm. and we're non-judgmental that's definitely helpful it kind of sets the stage for the more positive expectation effects that we could use yeah. i think um but i think more generally as well it's like sometimes it's remembering why you're doing something and so i, I do think with definitely with professional challenges or you know from personal challenges like moving house like when it comes to kind of doing the exam, giving the presentation, moving house, we can feel like it's this enormous, terrible burden, kind of as if we're being forced into something we really didn't want. But actually, like, with something like public speaking or moving house, it's like actually a great opportunity for change and growth. And that's what I try to remind myself now, is that, you know, I, you know, have found public speaking difficult in the past, but I actually do think it's a great privilege for me to be able to talk about my books, to be able to share this knowledge that I've researched. And, you know, I, I have that mindset when I agree to do the talks and I have to remind myself of that when I'm actually giving the talk. And that in itself, I think, changes the way I frame the stress that I'm feeling. It makes it much easier for me to feel that the stress is useful if I also realise that there's a kind of bigger purpose to what I'm doing here than just the challenge itself that is actually helping me to achieve personal growth. Yeah.